the last thing you want to see in training camp is one of your players in a cart going to the medical tent. What is going on, everyone? A lot of news going around training camp today, but the biggest news? Gruje Hill going down. He was able to walk off on his own power. There was a cart involved, though, to take him to the medical tent to get looked at. But for the most part, he was able to walk on his own power. Now, what does that mean? I don't know, because I've seen athletes be able to walk off on their own power, and there was bad news involved. I've seen some athletes not be able to walk off, and it's a sprained ankle, or it's a sprained knee, right? I mean, you've seen both scenarios, so I don't know what it is yet, and Doug Peterson talked to the media after and said he's obviously going to be getting looked at and going through more evaluations, so we're going to have to wait until we are informed as a fan base on what actually is the problem with Gruget Hill, but what sucks is there was a hole there at linebacker. Zach Brown hasn't lived up to the hype that we expected, let's be real. Jordan Hicks leaves. So there's a spot. There's a spot. And Gruget Hill has been making noise. He's been making plays. He even made a nice play today in the red zone where he blocked down one of Carson Wentz's passes. He knocked it down. He's been really loud with his game. And what I mean by that is the coaching staff has noticed him. Because he's making plays. He's bringing the effort. He's bringing the energy. He's being disruptive. He's caught the attention of Jim Schwartz, Doug Peterson. And and, and just like that, who knows what's going to happen. But there was a spot there, and it seemed like he was the favorite to take it. And I had high hopes for him. Now, obviously, once again, we don't know the situation yet. But I had high hopes for him to step in and be a solid player in that spot. More than what he was last year. Last year he was a minor energy guy. He played some special teams. But I'm telling you, there is a spot there in that linebacker room for him. And for him to take. So hopefully this injury does not set him back any. This isn't a practice... I'm sorry, this isn't an injury where... If I compare it to, say, what happened to Miles Sanders where he can come back tomorrow and just practice. It doesn't seem like it's to that degree. It seems as if he's going to miss some time. Whether that's just training camp. Whether that's a little bit of the regular season. Who knows? Who knows the degree of it yet? But I can't imagine him doing what Miles Sanders did where he went down and then he's coming back the next practice and performing. I'd be shocked. I'd absolutely 100% be shocked. So let's just wait and see what we hear from the Philadelphia Eagles in the next upcoming days here. As for what went down in practice today when it comes to productivity, it seemed like the offense, their mindset today was running the football. So Carson Wentz didn't have that much of an electric day, more of a quieter day for him, but he also made some noise, and we'll talk about that. But let's talk about the running game first. Miles Sanders had a solid day at the office. That's what I love to hear. Scott made Zach Brown miss pretty bad. And I don't know if that's Scott being solid or once again stating something that I stated earlier in this video. Zach Brown has just been so underwhelming. I am stunned, stunned that he is performing this poorly. How? He was so solid. He was so successful. And he just drops like this. Now, some people are more of game players where they don't really succeed in practice. They don't they don't have that flow in practice. They can't show their true game when it's not a legit situation. Some players are like that. But it seems as if Zach Brown came into training camp lazy. It seems as if he brought that Washington Redskins mindset to the Philadelphia Eagles training camp. But guess what? That's not going to work. So I don't know if, if this run here was because Scott was really making some noise and really being beautiful with his footwork and being explosive. Or if Zach Brown is just being lazy as hell, bringing that Washington Redskins mentality to camp. But it was on display today. Josh Adams was running hard today. Hard to bring down. I'm talking about breaking tackles left and right. And I'm going to be honest with you. If we keep five running backs, which is what I want to do, Jordan Howard, Miles Sanders, Darren Sproles, Corey Clement, Josh Adams. I think he brings a different element to the run game. He's hard to bring down. 
He's a beast. He could run you over. Eh, can Smallwood really do that? I feel like Smallwood is just another back, and we already somewhat have that in, in the mix. Josh Adams gives you that that bulldozer mentality when running the football. He's got things to learn. I'm not going to lie to you. He's no, he's no perfect product. But I want to keep Josh Adams. And he was hard to bring down today. He was legitimately breaking tackles all day long. So I love to see that. There was some honorable mentions. Sproles had a couple nice runs. Pumphrey <laughs> had a nice couple runs as well thrown in there. So some honorable mentions. Let's talk about Wentz. Like I said, a small dosage today for him, but he hit Deshaun Jackson on a beautiful throw about 50 yards or so. Sidney Jones brought a blitz, and Deshaun Jackson beat Avante Maddox. Rodney McLeod couldn't come over fast enough, and what do you know, Wentz does a little, how do you do, puts it in the bread basket, and the play was completed. Now, it was very nice to see that McLeod was able to go out there and at least compete, go out there and run, go out there and provide some sort of how do you do, because he's been sidelined. So to see Ronnie McLeod out there giving you something, just being a, a player who's capable of moving his legs a little bit, it's a good step in the right direction for someone like Rodney McLeod. You also had a beautiful touchdown play by Carson Wentz to Zach Ertz with great placement in a spot where Zach Ertz could be the only one to catch it. So good execution out of them too in the red zone. Speaking of the red zone, they went live in the red zone. And the offense, the first team offense, scored three out of five times. This is how the series played out. The first time, Jordan Howard went in untouched. Bang. Who's your daddy? What's he do? Two, Grugier Hill. This is where he had that that nice play where he batted down Carson Wentz's throw. Third time, Josh Adams. Touchdown. Fourth play, Howard stuffed by the defensive line at the line of scrimmage. And then the fifth one was that Zach Ertz touchdown. So the offense was able to score three out of the five times in the red zone there, which is something you, you love to hear. Some other little things. You had your first fight of camp. Sharif Miller versus Casey Tucker. Sharif, we obviously know about him because he got drafted and he's the local kid and he played at Penn State. So he has this personal tie. He grew up a diehard Eagles fan and he's getting into it. And, and you know what? It's it's a respectful fight. It's one of those fights where hey, you, you dap up after, but you're in the heat of the moment. You're fighting, you're battling, you're trying to make an NFL squad. You want to show the coaching staff that you want to compete out there. It's all fun and games. It's all good. It's all high-quality fighting. It means there's passion involved. It means there's care level. You know, everyone runs in, tries to break it up, and then you move on to the next one. But I love the fact that there's some passion involved between guys who are battling it out, trying to really prove themselves. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. There's nothing wrong with some competitive fire in training camp. There's nothing. That just means people care. That just means people want to be there, want to succeed, and want to put their best on display. That's fine, as long as it's in a respectful mode. And in this circumstance, it absolutely was. Because there were some offensive line versus defensive line drills going on, and that's when that happened. And speaking of that, Brandon Graham got the best of Andre Dillard a a few times with a bull rush. And listen, that's fine. This is where you learn. This is where Andre Dillard is going to experience moments like that. You're going up against Brandon Graham, all right? He's a guy who makes some plays. Dare I say one big play? (laughs) Super Bowl 52. But anyway, this is where you're going to learn. So Andre Dillard has to find a way to gain experience. Well, go up against Brandon Graham in practice. And Brandon Graham did some damage, but fine. Fine. Good. Good. That's how you have the young bucks learn. Other news. Sidney Jones. Played a little bit of slot. And it's just interesting because I'm a fan of Avante Maddox in the slot. And I and I know people are going to move around. But it looks like with those cornerbacks between him, Avante Maddox, Rasul Douglas, they're mixing it around a little bit. They're throwing people in different situations and seeing how they react. And listen, that's the point of training camp. Putting people in situations and seeing how they do. But I'm a big fan of Avante Maddox in the slot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. That's that's where I prefer him. But I'm not saying Sidney Jones isn't allowed to. It's just it was notable that Sidney Jones got some time in the slot today. I want to know your thoughts on training camp. Tomorrow is the live day from Citizens, not Citizens Bank Park. What am I saying? Lincoln Financial Field. It's the one that's open to the 
to the fans. And of course, we all know you have to pay this year, and there's only one practice. A lot of the fans aren't happy. It used to be in Lehigh. It was the best when it was Lehigh. We've been hearing it for so long now, of course. But tomorrow is the day where it is, I wouldn't even say open to the public because you have to pay, but it's available if you buy tickets to go watch. So I wonder how many people are going to be there. What do you think, 45,000? Do you think it'll be that much if the link holds, what, around 62,000? Are we thinking 40,000, 42,000? How many people show up to that practice? I would definitely go, but it's a little too late for me now to to address that, but it would be something I'm very interested in. So I want to hear your thoughts down below on Gruje Hill going down, on Carson Wentz's day, the running backs. Who would you want your running back core to be? Would you only keep four? Would you keep five if you did? keep five who is it would it be Smallwood or Josh Adams making that last spot Ronnie McLeod gets some time how do you feel about him getting back let me hear your thoughts on today's practice thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time